Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorials on Affinity Photo, and in this case, the bilateral blur. So I've got an image here, and this is image 25.jpg, which you can download from my website. So uh, please feel free to do that. There's a description, I'll put the where it's located. So key panels for this, view and studio, and go to channels and layers. And you can see them over here. So just a standard layer, and we can do filters, and blur and bilateral blur. Now, what does this do? It's a noise reduction feature. So I'm just going to split it so you can see the two together. So you can see the blur there, and you can obviously see you can move that backs and forwards. What you can do, you can reduce the radius, and then you can see obviously the grain. So if you've got some grain in it, this bilateral is very good for noise reduction. Though so you can push it too far, maybe tolerance, maybe reduce, and you can still see the text is still quite readable and still quite sharp even though what it's done it's blurred all of the obviously this grain that's all the way through this is an old document from about the 18th century and it's obviously got a bit of rough paper it's had a few years of however what you can do you can modify the tolerance and you can see the effect there so you can get a whole different types of blur effects just by using this tolerance and radius that's all you've got you can also push the settings up quite high. So you got here, obviously you can't set 100, you can set it 100%. So if you want to set it 100%, but what you can do with the radius, you can push it all the way up to 100, but you can also go over here and you can enter say 300. And you can really get some unusual blurs there, which of course you might not want. You can put the tolerance down and you can experiment with what you think really now the tolerance is a bit too high. I think the rate is too high there. You can see the text doesn't look so great. So maybe subtle variations in that you can get. That's much nicer. That really does look sort of similar to the thing but without the noise apply. Now, of course, it can't do anything with this. This is obviously a bad bit of the picture where I took the scan and you've ended up with that there. What you can also do, You've got channels. Channels are always good. What you can do, just click on here with channels, just click on the red. All the other channels will be removed. And then you go to filters and blur again, and obviously bilateral. Again, this noise reduction will only be for the red channel. So you can apply that, apply. So it takes a few seconds to process. And then you can just do it there. Go back to all of the channels, and you can see then what you've got is you've got the grain, but the grain has been removed from the red, but it's still there in the green and the blue, if that's what you want. So undo that. Go back to the, oops, right. So there's the image. What you can also do, you can do layers. So layer and duplicate layer. So the layer menu and duplicate. It's a key thing, just select there. So you've got two layers now, obviously two backgrounds, and you can of course resize and do various things. You can also apply the effect, so filters, and of course this effect can be applied with other things as well. So blur and bilateral blur. You can see the blur is applied there. So you can blur that, maybe not that high. And you can see the effect there. Again, noise reduction, but you've still got the grain around the edge there. If that's what you want to have, apply. But of course what you can do, now you've got it as a layer, you can go to over here, and you've got blending modes. Now it's not as flexible as the live filter layer, and I'm just gonna show that in a sec. You can see you can just run through there and you've got your text, but without any grain. So you've got really nice clear text there and no, no grain or noise in that whole picture, but obviously other than around the edges, which I haven't. However, next thing to do, what you can do, you can do selection still, of course. You can always go over here, maybe go to this time elliptical, I'm just going to go for elliptical. So just select there and say you've got some noise, particularly in that area. Maybe all, <clears throat> maybe the rest of the image has got no noise. You don't need to work on it. What you can do, you can just put a selection and you can always go to filters and blur and go down to bilateral blur. You can just apply it just to that area. Or you can, of course, invert it and apply freehand selections and much, much more. Oh, well, Apply a special effect. Maybe you just want to blur out certain parts of the image or make it hazier in a particular place. Maybe you've got some individual that you don't want to remove completely from the picture, but you can apply sort of a nice blurriness to the picture. 
and then apply that. Also, of course, you can combine it with other filters as well. So maybe you apply distort and all those other things as well as bilateral. Now, another thing you can do, you can go to a layer and you've got new live filter layer and you can go to blur. Now, obviously, you've got a load of blurs there. Not every blur, I think, is available, but this one, luckily, bilateral blur is. Weirdly, it's in a different position in that layer, that menu, than the other position. Makes no sense. But you can see what happens when you go layer. The background layer there has now got bilateral blur. There's the panel. And what you can do, you can, again, do exactly the same as before. You can reduce it all down. You can see it, it's... It's still quite readable. It's really great for creating that text, removing that noise, making it sort of blurred out. And what you can also do, of course, you've got blending modes. So you can run through and you've got darken and dark color difference, which isn't so good. You can just about make it out very, very, so you can create some very subtle text. If you want to apply that effect, exclusion, get some effects like that. And of course, you can still modify the settings, so radius, or push it up to maximum to make it really blurry, as well as, of course, combine with color burn and other effects, lighter color, and so on and so on. Now I'm just going to keep it normal. And of course, what you can also do, because it's just a layer, you can apply, just click there, you can duplicate it. Just go here, layer, and you can say duplicate, so you can create another one applied on top. So you can get some very interesting combinations, which of course you can then modify, normal, multiply, and so on. So you can create different combinations of effect using two or three of these layers of bilateral blur. And of course, one thing about live filter layers is that you can modify them again very quick and easy. Simply double click and it will bring up again down in the corner. I always wish it would be up in the center there, but However, maybe other people don't like it there, but it'd be nice if it remembered the last position it was stored at. So then you can change it, say normal again, if you want to use normal, and then go there. And you can always remove them as well. So simply click there and it's gone. And click there and it's gone completely. So that's the bilateral blur. You of course can use it many, many other ways as well. Loads and loads of different features infinity that you can combine it with you can maybe store it in macros as well so you can run sort of action you can run through different steps it's really useful as well so that's it with bilateral filter hope you found this tutorial of interest always adding new tutorials about affinity photo affinity designer and many many other applications as well of course please add some comments always appreciate it please put what did i do right what did i do wrong also if you've got some opinions about the bilateral blur Maybe not one of the filters you use that much, or maybe use a lot. Maybe you can add some comments, say, you know, this is the sort of thing you can do with it. Always great to see other people's, you know, how you use it. It's always great. Dislike or like, always appreciate it. Thank you much.